What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next concept. We're now gonna talk about algebraic tiles in this video and actually over the next couple of videos. In this video, I'll go through an overview of what it is and then over the next couple of videos, we'll do a few examples. Now, this topic, it's a little weird in my opinion and it's fairly unique and there's actually some teachers that don't even cover this so if your teacher does skip over algebraic tiles then you can just go to the next topic on the website but in case your teacher does go through this i wanted to make a few videos and if your teacher is going through it then it's most likely there's going to be a couple of questions that you get on your test related to it now algebraic tiles are basically visual representations of mathematical expressions. So mathematical expressions, usually it's going to be a combination of two things. There's going to be numbers involved. So these are going to be like the known quantities. And then there's also going to be unknown things. And then those are going to be represented with variables, right? So the variables are going to be unknown. So for example, if I say a statement like three more than two times a number, so that number there, that's the unknown. So we could represent that number as x. Usually the most common variable that's used is going to be x to represent that unknown thing. So the statement that I just made, three more three more than two times a number. So two times a number, three more than that, right? So that's a mathematical expression for that sentence that I just said. Okay, and you can also have like equations. So maybe, for example, if we know that the area of a square, let's say is 36 centimeters squared. So we could take a square. What we can do is we can notice that the lengths are unknown so we could put an x there for the lengths and then we know that x times x has to equal that area of 36 centimeters squared and then you could solve for that variable it's actually going to end up just being six right six times six is 36. so we're not going to get into solving stuff yet in these next couple of videos but i just did want to mention how when you're dealing with expressions it's going to be a combination of numbers like this three over here and then variables like the x right a common variable is the letter x but any letter really can be used that's arbitrary so what's going to happen where algebraic tiles come in it's basically a visual way to represent these two things so what's going to happen is if you have for example a square like this that's colored in that's going to represent the number one okay if you have a square that is not colored in it's going to represent minus one like that okay so for example if you see two squares like that that are colored in this would be plus two, right? But if they weren't colored in, then it would be minus two if there was two of these, for example. So that's how you represent numbers over here. And then if you're just dealing with large numbers, you would just put a bunch of these squares. Now, the next shape is going to be a rectangle. And a rectangle can either be colored in or it could be hollow, okay? And a colored in rectangle, that represents positive x, okay? And then a hollow rectangle represents minus x like that. And then finally, there's gonna be a large square that you could deal with. And then the large square, if it's colored in, what it's going to be is actually x times x, because if you think about it, this large square is like two of these rectangles, right? There's like a rectangle here and like a rectangle here. 
right? So it's almost like you're multiplying them to get this. So it's like x times x. So a large square that's filled in like this is actually going to be plus x squared. And then as you guessed it, a hollow large square is going to be negative x squared like that. Okay, and those are the six shapes that we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of videos. So as I mentioned, it's kind of weird, right? It's kind of strange how we're doing this, but nevertheless, sometimes it is covered. So we got to go through it. So for example, let's say that I wanted to represent the expression x plus one with algebraic tiles. Well, we would have to put one of these over here right, one of those rectangles that are filled in. And then the plus one, we would have to add in one of those little squares. So if you see something like that, that is x plus one. Okay, what about something like, let's say negative two x squared plus three? Well, we would put two of these, right? Negative x squared plus negative x squared would give us negative two x squared. So we would put two large, or uh, sorry, yeah, two large squares, but the hollow squares because it's negative over here. So this, this, and then there's three of these squares. It's a positive three. So there would be three of these small filled in squares. If it was minus three, then it'd be three of these. Right, and usually you'll see them, they could be at the bottom, they could be over here, sometimes at the top, but usually you'll see them lined up like that, right? So negative two x squared, these two, and then we have the plus three, like that. Okay, so it's just a visual way to represent these expressions. And over the next couple of videos, we're gonna just do a bunch of examples dealing with algebraic tiles.